Hi, I'm Andy from Backcountry Access, and today we're talking Shoveling 101. Now, shoveling might seem elementary, but it's the most demanding phase of any avalanche rescue. But if you do it right, you'll reach your victim faster and also have a really workable area when you excavate the victim to perform any first aid that's needed. In this video, we're going to study the concepts behind strategic shoveling, talk about allocating manpower, and go over scenarios where we have one shoveler up to five shovelers. There's a few main concepts involved in shoveling for an avalanche victim. The ABCs of digging. A is for airway. You always want to preserve the victim's airway when you're shoveling in an avalanche rescue. This is done by shoveling downhill of your probe strike. In shallow burials, a meter or less, you're going to just take one step downhill and begin shoveling. But in deeper burials where you've got more snow to manage, you're going to take two steps downhill. B is for burial depth. You're going to use that burial depth to determine where you start shoveling. C is for clearing snow. You always want to start off chopping and clearing that snow to the side of your hole. By doing this, you've preserved the whole downhill side of the hole for later in the rescue when that snow starts to pile up on the sides and you find yourself lifting it, that will tire you out. So now you can just paddle that snow downhill, you're moving efficiently, you're saving energy, and you're getting to that avalanche victim faster. When shoveling, it's important to work as a team. Help each other get gear out without having to remove packs. Keeping your backpack on prevents losing gear and keeps all essential rescue gear with you. If snowmobiling, we recommend carrying one shovel on your tunnel bag for digging out your sled and one on your back for digging an avalanche debris. This way, if a rider is stuck in avalanche train and needs to shovel, they do not need to take off their float pack and risk being caught not wearing it. Sometimes you might find trees and branches in the debris. It can be quicker to cut through this debris with a saw than shovel around it. When to use home mode or regular mode? It really depends on how firm the snow is. The shovel is stronger in traditional mode and is best for chopping hard snow when used like that. When the shovel's in a hoe, it's more efficient for moving snow downhill once some of that larger debris has been chopped up. Let's go through some various scenarios where we demonstrate techniques based on burial depth, slope angle, and the number of people available to shovel. Keep in mind that the shallower the burial, the more manpower you should have at the probe strike. The deeper the burial, the more people you'll need downhill of the probe to clear snow away from the excavation area. Likewise, the steeper the slope, the shorter the excavation area needs to be. And the flatter the slope, the longer the excavation area needs to be. Generally speaking, you'll need to dig a trench that's at least one wingspan wide with a length that extends downhill of the probe about one and a half times the burial depth. First, we're going to show a scenario with one shoveler. In a burial less than one meter, begin shoveling one step below the probe strike. In a deeper burial, greater than one meter, begin shoveling two steps below the probe strike. Always dig toward the tip of the probe. It's only necessary to step back from the probe when there's only one shoveler. If there's more than one shoveler, the top shoveler should always start digging directly downhill of the probe strike. In a scenario with two shovelers available and a burial depth of less than one meter, the team can work side by side at the probe strike. In a burial greater than one meter with two shovelers available, shovelers will work in line with the primary shoveler working right at the probe and the secondary shoveler downhill about 80 centimeters or one extended shovel length from the primary shoveler. The primary shoveler's main job is to chop the debris into chunks and pass it to the secondary shoveler. When using more than one shoveler, make sure you set up properly before you start digging. Spread apart downhill by taking your shovel, extending it, and putting it at your hip. The next person should be standing about where your shovel ends. Proper spacing is critical as you don't want to get in the way of the other shovelers. Their job as a secondary shoveler is to move that snow down the hill and clear a nice area for excavation and first aid. With three shovelers and a burial depth less than one meter, place two rescuers at the probe and one behind it about a shovel length downhill. In deep burials greater than one meter, place one rescuer at the probe and the remaining two rescuers downhill in a line about 80 centimeters apart or one shovel length apart. If you have four or more shovelers in a burial depth less than one meter, place two shovelers at the probe and two downhill with about one shovel length in between them. With four shovelers and a burial deeper than one meter, put one shoveler at the probe and the remaining team downhill in line one shovel length apart from each other. 
In an avalanche rescue, the more manpower you have available for excavation, the better chance you have of survival. Shoveling is exhausting, especially for the person up front. Therefore, if the burial is deeper than one meter, you should rotate or swap positions every few minutes. The shoveler at the front should call when to do this. The front shoveler then moves to the back and the second shoveler moves into the first position. If you still have extra manpower after that, then one or two people can rest during each rotation. By the time you reach the victim, the excavation area should be one to two meters wide at the top and about two meters wide at the bottom. Be careful not to injure the victim with your shovel when you get close. Once you reach the victim and clear their airway, you may need to perform first aid or CPR. Hopefully the trench you dug will provide enough room for doing this. If not, you'll need to dig around the victim and create additional room. For additional info on how to treat avalanche victims, see our video called Post-Avalanche Patient Care. Stay safe out there.